Hey y'all, welcome back to the party. It's me, your girl, Britt Reacts. And today we are reacting to Theo Vaughn, me and Daryl Strawberry. This is from This Is Not Happening. Let's see what he has to say. Prepare for a crazy intro, per usual. And I'm gonna so Google Daryl Strawberry. I got a gift for you. I got a gift. And I grew up Damn. in like a broken neighborhood. You know, I thought it was gonna be his cock, you know? <laughs> So I start practicing my like, see a cock, like don't be interested faces, you know? Like, <laughs> Got it. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Hey, there you go, boys, drink up. Nobody's gonna remember what the hell's happening tonight. That dude's trying to get my couch pregnant. Okay. He's peeing out the window. Dude, come on, man. John Legend bought me that piano. He brought a ball pit. His podcast is called This Past Weekend, a southern boy like me so I am 11 months sober, right? I'm a sober guy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I didn't want to be, but this is what happened. I was in New York City, right? New York City, New York. They call it the same thing right back in front of each other just to really piss you off before you get there. It's like, we heard you in the beginning. You know? <laughs> but I was in New York City, uh, east of Hoboken. Okay, first of all, the throwing up almost sent me. If you don't know, I'm very pregnant. And that just almost sent me. So now I needed to put some, something in my mouth to change the flavor of me wanting to gag because yuck. Sweetest Trish is my favorite candy. They always sit right here. As does my water and my fake Stanley, okay? All right, now we got Matt out of the way. As a New Yorker, born in New York, grew up in the South, moved back to New York in my 20s, and was there until I became a mom and moved back to the South where my family was. Um, <laughs> there is this like, pretension of right like is that a word pretentious pretension of like why do you say new york new york new york city new york right like nyc i don't know what do you call it but like i just think that's funny that he said that and then if you know anything about hoboken hoboken is the like jersey city right across the water that you can see like new york can see hoboken hoboken can see new york um i don't know why he said east of hoboken <laughs> like this guy, I love him. I have I have come to really become a fan of his. My husband and I were talking about him last night. Um, and he was just like, I uh, I see you started to watch Theo Vaughn. My husband has watched him before and didn't say anything to me about him until I started watching him. He's like, it's about time. <laughs> and he literally said, don't you feel like he just says whatever comes to his mind? I said, no, I think he says whatever comes to everyone's mind. We are just all afraid to say it. And he's like, you're right. You're 100% right. <laughs> and so I'm excited for this story. And I hadn't planned on doing any cocaine. Okay? I planned on doing this much cocaine. That's a zero amount, you know? Is it? Is it? But apparently some cocaine had planned on getting together with me when it left its home. <laughs> is... So I went to it's, this party, it's his man, fault. and my friends were at this party, and, uh... And I felt uncomfortable when I got to this party. Probably because, like, when I really think back on my life, like, I've always just felt uncomfortable, you know? Like, I don't know what it is. Like, my whole life has just been this constant struggle with every moment. Like, I'm just wrestling with every second just to feel okay. Like, I don't even want to feel good. Just set me in the middle, you know? <laughs> So I'm at this party, and I'm feeling how I feel regularly, uncomfortable. Uh, so I decided to have some drinks because my friends are alcoholics. And 
I'm competitive. <laughs> so when in Rome, you do what the alcoholics do. All right. Her. I have a couple tequilas, right? And tequila, let's be honest, like pouring Mexico right into your body. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I mean, make you jump a fence, make you buy a gun, make you run across a highway with your family. Make you black out. Make you knock a woman up. Make you knock a woman down, okay? <laughs> Olay, Janet, you know? So I had me a couple tequilas, and, uh, and I was feeling alive, you know? I was feeling a little more comfortable. Now, at 1.30 in the morning, I left, this, uh, I left this party because at 6.30 a.m., I had to be on the nationally syndicated radio program, the Opie and Jim Norton radio show. I have a question. On topic, but very off topic. What haircut is this? I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with his haircut. Like, I just, you know, in black barbershops, there's a poster board that has, like, corresponding numbers with the haircut. What, what number haircut is this on the, on the haircut poster? I understand it's a mullet, but it's a, it's a, uh, there's some levels to this mullet. It's layered. It's choppy on the, it's low. It's tapered a little bit. <laughs> what is this haircut? I just need to know. There's like, you know, the mullet is not super long. Uh, I just, I would love to know. I'm so invested in the mullet. And uh, it's a, yeah, it's a wonderful show that tapes there in New York City, New York. And, <laughs> and those are two men that I really admire, you know? And admire is when somebody's better than you, but you still like them. Okay. It's an old fashioned ideal. So at 1.30 a.m. I get into this taxi cab, right? This beautiful Asian girl that I do not know gets into the taxi with me. We're both headed the same way. They call it sharing a taxi, okay? I've never shared a taxi with a stranger. And this girl lays ever. the back of her head right into my lap. And I'm thinking, what? fuck yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> New York's got these beautiful free Asian girls with every taxi ride. This is a marvelous accoutrement to the city, you know? A marvelous accoutrement? Uber, no, thank you. Taxi, you have won me back. <laughs> so this girl's just laying in my lap, and she just starts reminiscing about her evening, you know? She said, she if said... If this was anywhere else in the world, I wouldn't believe it. If this story was, the setting was anywhere else in the world, I, I wouldn't believe it. But because it's in New York City, New York, I 100% believe this story. Also, I've never shared a taxi with a stranger. I've shared Ubers, like, you know, Uber sharing, but I've never, like, gotten in a taxi and someone else got in or, like, we picked up somebody else. That's interesting. I wonder how old or how long ago this story took place. She had a nice evening, but that her boyfriend wasn't in town, that he's never in town. Then she goes, what happens in taxis stays in taxis. Maybe Vegas, and I'm too. Not, Maybe Vegas. The brightest, you know, bowl in the bowl drawer, you know? <laughs> a bowl drawer? Fuck, <laughs> oh, dude. He Ever was not picking up what she like, was putting do down. <laughs> but I'm looking around this vehicle after she says that, and I'm thinking, this is a taxi, you know? <laughs> I mean, taxi me once, shame on me. So I'm feeling kind of cavalier after her statements, right? I go down to make a kiss, you know? This young lady's laying in my lap. I go down to make a kiss. Make now, a kiss? Now, trying to He's kiss so someone country. just laying in your lap. It's hard. That's a beautiful idea. It's hard. Until Unless you're super flexible to lean all the way over, especially for men. I feel like women have more, like, uh, natural flexibility. Like... A man for him to bend over and like, yeah, that's kind of hard. Unless she leaned up to, yeah, yeah. Physically, it's kind of hard. So you get right here, okay? <laughs> and then you're just milling around like a lip rapist, bro. I cannot. I don't think James Bond could kiss a woman laying in his lap, okay? So she pushed me off of her. Um, she called me a creep. She called, me a, she called me a pervert. Pervert? Um, but she said, what happens in cabs stays in cabs. What does she think was going to happen? 
Why would she say that otherwise? And then it was awkward for a few blocks. Until I'm not, I'm not like victim shaming her. I'm just wondering what was her reason for saying that? I feel like anyone would think that she was coming on to him unless she was coming on to the taxi driver. Why would you say what happens in tax? I don't know. Maybe she misunderstood. I don't know. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, she got dropped off wherever she was going. Uh, I'm not sure even where it was. I think it was like a halfway house for complete cunts or something. <laughs> And at that point, it's just me and the driver, you know? And, and I thought he said drugs. He, he could have said something else. English wasn't his first language, you know? He was bilingual. But I heard drugs in my head, you know? And so I said, cocaine! Like I was coaxed for Columbus, bruh. And we just landed on crack rock, you know? Oh my and gosh. And I heard him accelerate that vehicle. And that's universal language for we're going to get some cocaine. Because that's a drug to me, you know? Weed, weed is a confusing spice. <laughs> I mean, weed will make you forget how to get home. Cocaine will make you forget how to get to heaven. Jesus, Lord. So we just drove, man. Man, we just drove, man. And uh, we drove for about a half hour into like North Harlem. Uh, if that's even a place, I don't even know. North Harlem, uh, like. But it was a dark neighborhood. The upper 120. And that's not a euphemism. <laughs> All the street lights were busted out. So you couldn't tell that it was predominantly black. <laughs> but I grew up in a black neighborhood. I know when I'm back, you know? I know when I'm and back. And we got there, man, and I gave this dude some money. He gets out of the vehicle, comes back a few minutes later with some cocaine on him, you know? But he sits in the back seat next to me. A little alarming, you know? Kind of like when you're in the air on a plane and you see the pilot taking a piss, and you're like, what the fuck, dude? Is this spirit? <laughs> Well, for one, aren't, isn't there always a co-pilot? And for two, isn't there autopilot? I've never seen a... Yeah, I have seen a pilot come out of the cockpit while the plane was flying. I didn't even think twice about it. It's like, relieve yourself. There's someone else there for you. That's, that's his job. Oh, my gosh. What I'm not understanding is he's acting like this uh, sniff, sniff Coca-Cola landed in his lap. No, sir. You actually handed this man money to go make the purchase to cop it. So you're not innocent here. <clears throat> but this beautiful gentleman scooped up a little bit of beautiful cocaine gentleman. on the car key, put it under my nose, <laughs> killed that baby, bruh. Then I scooped him one, and he killed his, man. And then, and, 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 and. and Ouch. Just, just a couple of dueling cocainists. <laughs> and we got high, man. Um, we got high for about 40 minutes. Dude, I, re I remember being so high at one point. I was like, dude, where the fuck is the driver, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he didn't know. Of course. So we sat there, man. We continued to get high together, me and this beautiful gentleman. And I love that he keeps he calling him beautiful Luigi, gentleman. Luigi, that was his name. Luigi. And I thought that was Spanish, you know? Uh, like that rare Italian Spanish. <laughs> so I start saying my name in Spanish, Teodoro. Because I learned Spanish in Louisiana. And my whole life, I thought Teodoro was Spanish for Theodore, which is my first name. About six months ago, this girl goes, that means I adore you. <laughs> Wish you would have told me at some other point, you know? Because it's fine, right? It's fine to tell people you adore them when you meet them. But when you're an hour deep into an eight ball <laughs> with a man who keeps saying he's Luigi and you just keep saying, I adore you to him. 99% <laughs> of the time, this don't end heterosexually. <laughs> so... <laughs> It feels like a long day for me so listening to this. So he starts saying, I got a gift for you. No. I got a gift. And I grew up in like a Somebody said, oh, shit. Yeah. What does that neighborhood. mean? You know, I thought it was going to be his cock, you know? 
And where is Daryl Strawberry in this story? I Google Daryl Strawberry. I'm like, that name sounds vaguely familiar. He's a former baseball player, so maybe I've heard that before in the many sports households that I've been in and grew up in and yada, yada, yada. What does Daryl have to do with this? I'm so confused. So I start <clears throat> practicing my, like, see a cock, like, don't be interested faces, you know? Like, <laughs> So I'm running through the roller decks of no cock for me faces. And, uh, and then he keeps saying, I got a gif, a gif. I got a gif for you. Then I'm thinking it's like a thing on his phone, you know, like a GIF, you know? Like a, like a disappointed walrus, you know? Like Monday, Monday, Monday. What? Monday I've never seen that gif. Monday. I hate, I hate it for but the they, people that sit behind the comedian the whole time. They literally are just looking at his back. I hate that for them. They got to come up with better seating in this show. And I hear on the taxi door. And I'm like, who knocks on a car door, dude? Come in or just be out there, you know? The police? Were you raised in a house of car doors in it? So I'm like, come in. Because now I got to live in this shit universe they created by knocking. And a toot gets in. A prostitute, you know? A toot? Uh, a toot. You can't say pros. Pros is somebody that uh, have a prosthetic, you know? And a toot get mad if you call him a pros. If, uh, this if man they... is an idiot. He's an idiot, and I love him. I love him. <laughs> a toot gets in. You know? <laughs> And a toot get mad if you call him a pros if, uh, if they got everything, you know? So I'm being politically correct and I'm saying this too, you know? And I respect prostitutes. I respect all women, you know? Whether they're a president or a prostitute, I respect them, man. Uh, you know, prostitute, probably a tougher job, let's be honest, these days, dude. You out there middle of the night, slanging that canal, you know? Slanging that canal! A lot of men are gay, market shares decline. So I respect prostitutes, man, but I don't want to deal with a prostitute tonight. I just want to do cocaine with my Catcher, I'm just here crying. <sighs> Every time I watch this, man, I feel like I'm gonna go into early labor. <laughs> oh my gosh! Never in my life have I heard such an accurate but absurd way of addressing something <laughs> Swinging. that canal y'all i just lost it y'all just watch me witness me lose canal it. you know i need to hear him say you out there time. middle of the night slanging that canal you know? <laughs> a lot of men are gay market shares decline so i respect prostitutes man, but i don't want to deal with the prostitute tonight i just want to do cocaine with my adorable buddy Louis. <laughs> you know Oh and this God. prostitute, man, she had like a, you know, she had a wig that covered, you could see about 60% of her face, okay? And to me, it looked like a man's face, right? Which is fine, you know? Um, no judgment there. I'm just saying, if I were on a game show called Guess 60% of This versus Face, <laughs> I would guess man first, you know? <laughs> but so we're all, uh, we're all back there getting high together, and this prostitute starts making advances towards me. And I don't want a prostitute. So I start feeling uncomfortable, which is where I live at most of the time. So it only took me about half a lung to get there, you know? Half a so lung. So I get out of the taxi into the street in North Harlem, right? Luigi comes out after me, because that's new friendship. <laughs> and he's like, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, hundred dollars. So I give him a hundred bucks. I'm thinking he's gonna pay this too. She'll go on about her business. We'll get back to, you know, uh, you know friendship. <laughs> I look over a minute later, they're kissing on each other's necks, okay? He's investing my hundred back here with this prostitute, you know? I still have a $240 meter on the front of this taxi, right? So I'm out 360, not even in the vehicle, 
unfair. But I deal with my negative feelings outside of the car, so I don't bring negative energy back into the vehicle, right? <laughs> then I get back into the... You guys. <laughs> this story is too, it's too crazy not to be true. Like, it's too crazy. And the nights in New York are like... <laughs> Something happens in New York when the sun goes down. Something crazy. And I believe the $260 taxi fare, because Harlem is far. I don't know where he started in Manhattan, but Harlem is far. And if you're up in the in the North Harlem, basically, what's after Harlem? The Bronx? Or like upstate, depending on which way you go? Forget about it. The taxi. But now I'm sitting in the front passenger seat, right? <clears throat> you can hear Luigi and the toot in the back. Um, so you can hear the light rustlings of a blowjob, you know, kind of just, just simmering up into existence. <laughs> A good blowjob, too. It sounds like, you know, one you see on the internet, you know? Internet. Sound like somebody's at a water park. And I respect what they're doing, man. But I still want to do cocaine by myself, right? So now I'm trying to be considerate and quietly do cocaine by myself, right? This is so crazy. This is so crazy. This is so crazy. Just the softest little cokehead you ever met, dude. Just like, a, just like a newborn rabbit just hopping upon a gram, you know? At one point, I was leaning my hopped. head back and just quiet. Not happened, hopped upon a gram. Gram, you know? At one point, I was leaning my head back and just quietly <laughs> dumping cocaine into the bottom of my nose. His it was septum. awesome, bruh. Luigi's in the back, dude. He's at the water park, bro. He got that all-day wristband, dude. He don't give a fuck All about day wristband. Me. He goes, you drive, you drive. <laughs> and this is when I knew I had a problem, man. Not specifically with drugs and alcohol, but with the no? way that I behave when I'm on drugs and alcohol. When I moved over into the driver's oh, seat. Oh, my gosh. Of this taxi, right? Put on my seatbelt. I remember asking them to put their seatbelt on. <laughs> but they don't even make a seatbelt for all that activity, you know? We need seatbelt reform. I've been saying this. Seat and I started this reform? vehicle and I drove us off into North Harlem, man. At 4.15 in the morning, just driving. To where? Drove for probably about 20 minutes. Didn't know where I was. You know, my brain's like, damn, dude, you're lost. <laughs> it's 4.30 in the morning, man. You're high on cocaine. <laughs> but at least you're working. <laughs> at least you're out here making money for your family, okay? No. I don't money for have Luigi's a family, family, dude. <laughs> More importantly, I don't drive taxi, bro. <laughs> But then my brain also goes, but man, you don't have a commercial driver's license. As if that was gonna be an issue when the cop stops us. <laughs> There's empty cocaine bags everywhere, right? Like, look like I've been washing my face oh. with powdered donuts. <laughs> the sex crimes in the back seat, potentially gay sex crimes in the back seat. And that officer's just gonna be like, that's all for naught, young soldier. You don't have a chauffeur certificate. <laughs> It's highly likely, it's highly likely that the cop would first talk to you about not being certified as a cab driver because that's the first thing they, they look for and they ask for. So, you know, you have two passengers in the back. That's normal in a cab. I'm just saying. But Welcome that's to New what York. got me to pull over, man. I pulled over, I left a couple hundred dollars on that car seat. I started walking off, man. I walked about three blocks, got into a regular taxi, right? Oh, a regular one. <laughs> I, I even made him pop the trunk just to make sure that spare tire wasn't shooting up in the back, you know? What? I get to my hotel, it's 5.30 <clears throat> in the morning, and in one hour, I gotta be on the nationally syndicated radio program, the Opie and Jim Norton radio show, two men that I really admire. Oh so I finished doing my cocaine. I'm, I need to hydrate, I'm so tired. you can't not finish your cocaine, dude. Try to not finish your cocaine. I will watch you try. 
What do they put in it? Cigarettes? I took three showers in 10 minutes, son. And dried off after each one, bro. You don't know me. Then I start walking to the radio station, oh right? Oh, my Lord. It's five blocks. Uh, to the serious building. Halfway there, I realize it? that I have on jeans with sweatpants over them. <laughs> Something I've never worn before because nobody's ever worn it. I'm the Neil Armstrong of pants this morning. I oh get up to the radio gosh. station. They tell me you I got to be in the air for three hours. There's a million listeners, right? I can't feel my face. Of course not. With either hand. Highest I can feel my neck. Running on neck thoughts. <laughs> and the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. Okay, thank you for at least bringing it home for me. Yeah. Who's in the Hall of Fame? He's a Hall of Fame baseball player and he's in the Hall of Fame for cocaine. Oh, is he? What an eight ball as beautiful man couldn't hit, right? I didn't know and that bless part. bless his heart, man, he's 13 years. Wikipedia didn't tell me that part. Oh, is he about to say this man is 13 years sober? Ball as beautiful man couldn't hit, right? And bless his heart, man, he's 13 years sober and he's eloquent and successful and well put together. And he was some of these ideas that I, maybe I envision myself as, but this morning I'm showing up, you know, nothing like that, you know? Um, so it just made me think like, dude, you gotta tighten up, you know? Uh, and I'll say this too about Daryl Strawberry, man. I have big nostrils. Daryl Strawberry got the biggest nostrils you ever seen. <laughs> I gotta go back to my Google reference. I'm not saying it to shame him. It's not an ethnic thing. This man got dead stars at the bottom of his nose, okay? <laughs> and I just say He's... it so that you understand he didn't... I'm not gonna put the picture back in the camera, but... He has a black man nose, and most, you know... Black people are not known for our small noses, so... I got big nostrils, too. <laughs> And stand oh a chance gosh. against a fine powder. <laughs> this beautiful man could kill I'm a spice rack from 70 feet away. Okay? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Take that nutmeg. What you looking at, coriander? But on this day, he was everything I needed to see. You know? I'm still looking at his uh, nose pictures. So yeah, so that's when I got sober and now I've been sober for 11 months. Uh, and I'm Theo Vaughn. Thank you for having me. You guys be good. <laughs> I need to go to rehab after this story. I am going to check myself into a rehabilitation center after this story. So I hope you go and have the day you deserve. Goodbye now.